In the last chapter, we learned how to take sample information to make reasonable estimates about the corresponding parameter for an entire population. Specifically, we learned how to take a sample proportion and create a confidence interval that is an, an estimate of the whole population's proportion. And we also learned how to take a, a sample, calculate its mean, and use that sample mean to create a confidence interval to represent a good estimate for what we think the entire population's mean is. Now, we're going to do something completely different with sample information. We're going to use sample information now to use it to test a claim made by somebody else about a proportion. And in a later video, we'll explain how to take sample information and test a claim about the mean. So let's start by taking a specific example and look at this claim here. Here's my claim. Claim is that more than 50% of all car crashes occur within five miles of home. Huh, do you believe that? You think that's right? You really think that more than 50% of all car crashes occur within five miles of home? And we're going to test this with a significance level of 1%. And we'll talk a little bit later what that means. Now here's my study results. <clears throat> We went out and did a study on our own to see if we could support this claim. And the result of our study is that we studied 11,000 random car crashes and it turns out that 5,720 of those car crashes did occur within five miles of home. Now hopefully most, most of you are good enough in math and you could see right away that this 5,720 is bigger than uh, half of 11,000, bigger than 50%, which would be 5,500. But is that, is that good enough? Well, no, things are never this simple, are they? If we're going to use our study to support this original claim, then we not only have to come up with a result that is more than 50%, which we did, but we've got to go one step further than that. We have to come up with a result that is significantly more than 50%. If we're going to say that our study supports this claim, we've got to come up with a result that is significantly more than 50%. That is, our, our study has to result in significantly more than 50% of the car crashes occurred within five miles. Well, what do I mean by significant? Well, as I said here, we're going to test this at a significance level of 1%. And at this point you're saying, yeah, I get that, but I still don't know what it means to be significantly higher than 50%. Well, I will explain that, I promise. <clears throat> okay, and I've got this written down. Our steady results must be significantly bigger that 50%. So where do we start? Okay, we're going to start by identifying the hypotheses. And there are always two hypotheses involved, two statements. One of them is, is going to be the original statement. Then, of course, the original statement is more than 50% of all car crashes occur within five miles of home. Okay, now since our original statement uses the phrase more than, that implies an inequality. And inequality is either not equal to, or greater than, or less than. Hopefully you understand that more than implies inequality greater than. Okay? Now, we use the letter P, small case P, lowercase p, to represent the actual proportion of the population. So our claim is going to be put under this H sub 1, which is known as the alternate hypothesis. And the alternate hypothesis always deals with an inequality, such as our original claim. So what our original claim could be in symbolic form is, is that P, the population proportion, is greater than 
50%, and I'm going to write that 50% as 0.5. Okay? Now, H sub 0, we're using to represent the null hypothesis. Now, I know in other textbooks, they use different symbols to represent the null and alternate hypotheses, but ours uses H sub 0 and H sub 1. H sub 0 is always the null hypothesis. Let me put that down here. The null hypothesis. And it always deals with equals. That is, it's always an equality. Okay? So if the inequality is that the proportion is bigger than 0.5, then the equality would be that the proportion is equal to 0.5. <clears throat> All right? Now, for testing purposes, we, we're hoping, if we're, if we're hoping to support the claim, and this is the claim, we're hoping to support this claim right here, the Alton hypothesis. This is the original claim. However, I know this is going to sound strange, but for testing purposes, we always simply assume that the null hypothesis is true, and in this case, we're going to assume that is true, but we're going to show that that's going to lead to a problem. And so it can't be true. And if this can't be true, then that means that my alternate hypothesis must be true. It may sound a little confusing, but once you do a few examples, it'll become clear. Okay, so we're going to assume that the null hypothesis is true. That is, that the, that the proportion of car crashes that occur within five miles isn't bigger than 50%. It is 50% or 0.5. So if, if we're assuming that to be true, then a picture of this distribution would look as follows. The um, well, question is, what kind of distribution is this? Well, let's talk about it. We have, from our study, we have a fixed number of car crashes, namely 11,000. And we're assuming those 11,000 car crashes were, you know, independent of each other. And... We know that for each car crash, in the way we have defined the problem, there are exactly two possible outcomes. That car crash either occurred within five miles or occurred outside of five miles from home. So we have two possible outcomes. The trials are independent and there are 11,000. That should sound familiar. That should sound like to you a binomial distribution. And indeed it is. And we know that we show binomial distributions as on a, on a graph as being numbered from zero, the x-axis from zero to 11,000, but I really don't want to put zero to 11,000 on here. I decided instead to just use units of change, change everything to percent, so it'd be zero percent to 100 percent. Zero percent would be here, I've got 10 percent marked, and here's 50 percent, and I've got 90 percent marked, and of course 100 percent would be clear on the very end. But I could just as easily have done this from zero to 11,000. And we're going to draw a distribution, as you might remember, a binomial distribution is always shown with vertical bars. So if we're assuming that 50% that of accidents do occur at home, we can expect this to be the largest probability. Uh, again, on my x-axis is the, the number from 0 to 11,000 or 0 to 900% of them, and here this axis is probability. Okay? Now, being binomial, we know that the rest of the shape that continues to be vertical bars, they get smaller and smaller and smaller in either direction. And because this is right centered in the middle, this will com be completely symmetrical on the left side and the right side of 50%. These get smaller and smaller so you can't see them we would expect our distribution to look like this. On the next video, we will continue this, and we'll actually see if we can support or not support our original claim.